All I wanted to do was learn what UTF-8 stands for. And then I fell in this rabbit hole and from binary files ASCII to Unicode, I finally landed back where I came from, UTF-8. When I read that UTF-8 is an encoding format for text files, my first question was, if there are text files, what makes them different from binary files? Which led to a simpler question, what is a binary file? In computer science, binary usually means two. A binary function takes two arguments, a binary operator two operands, and a binary number has two values, 0 and 1. So I thought that a binary file means that the data is encoded as zeros and ones. And you know what? It is. But there is something special about these bits. Computers store them in chunks of 8 bits, which are called bytes. So when the computer reads the data, you get data as a stream of bytes. So is it the binary numbers that makes this file a binary file? No. All these zeros and ones can still be binary files or text files. So let me get back to the question. What is a binary file? Here is a bitmap file. How are bitmaps stored? They store the bitmap type, the width, the height, and then the colors for all pixels in the image. And each image type has a different way of storing its data. Notice that the data has values, but no labels. The program that reads this data just has to trust that the data is partitioned in a certain way. Now the funny thing is that text files are also binary files, but what makes them special is their partitioning. I'll start with the mother of all text encodings, which is ASCII. ASCII allows for 127 characters that all have a number. Most programmers know that the uppercase letter A has the number 65. A lowercase a is 97. There are codes for numbers, and ASCII has special characters. Some are obsolete, like starting the transmission of a telex message or ringing its bell, and some are still in use today, like the carriage return. Any message that is encoded in ASCII can be stored in a binary file, but there is an obvious feature here. Since ASCII only allows 127 values, the values can be encoded with 7 bits. A zero is prepended so that each character has 8 bits, which is a byte. When reading an ASCII encoded file, each byte is a character. That is a simple rule that gets more complicated when I proceed with UTF-8. But before I do that, I can now show the technical difference between a binary file and an ASCII file. A binary file contains partitioned data in a way that is specific for each file type. And an ASCII text file is also a binary file where one byte represents one character. And to simplify it even more, from now I will use the definition I read on wiki. A binary file is a computer file that is not a text file. But this raises a new question. How does the computer know if a file is binary or text? Now this is not a trivial question and developers have struggled with this for a long time. And that is because there is no way of knowing unless you inspect the file. You could start by trusting the file extension to be correct or look into the file and if you find a lot of new line characters, it might be a text file or you try to find character sequences that are known to belong to a specific file type. So how do you look into a file? Well, when I started programming, it was quite common to look into files and memory and make changes directly at a certain memory location. For this, you need a hex viewer. I'll create one in Python. I open the image in binary mode. How many bytes are that? The image was 20 by 25 pixels. 
that is 500 pixels. But the result is roughly four times as big. That is because each pixel has an R, G, B and alpha value. 4 times 500 is 2000 plus a bit extra for the metadata. Sounds about right. I'll look into the file and since I want 16 bytes per line, I batch the bytes in groups of 16. I will only show the first 800 bytes to prevent choking up the computer in case of large files. I loop through the chunks and print the address of the first byte on the line. I import iter tools and execute the code. Very good. Now I add the bytes on the line. OK, and in case I can print the character, I add it to the line. Otherwise, I print a dot. I import string and execute the code. And that works. Here are the bytes from the file. Now look at the beginning of the file. There is the PNG description. I do not recognize the rest of the data, but part of it is the PNG header and the rest is pixel data. OK, that is what binary files look like. Now I will save an ASCII file and open it with the hex viewer. I open a file to write and choose binary mode. I encode a string as ASCII and write it to the file. I execute the code and ASCII.txt appears. And that works. I open it with the hex viewer. And look at that. The length of string hello is 5 and that is exactly the length of the file. Good. That was binary and ASCII, which was fine in the 80s when most computer stuff was done in English. But then the rest of the world wanted to encode their languages as well. Now, I am from the Netherlands. Our language is influenced by French and we got a lot of these. Or these. These dots are called trema. Not to be confused with the German umlaut. So when all special characters of all world languages need to be stored, 8 bits of data is not enough. And at some point, the world got Unicode. Unicode allows for more than a million characters. They are stored in a grid where each character has a place called a code point. For example, the number 0 is at this code point and E accent aigu is at this point. This grid also has many room for other characters like emoji. At unicode.org you find all their code points. Code points are expressed as hexadecimal values. For example, this smiley is at code point 1F60A. Let's see if Python can print that. In Python, all strings are Unicode and you can type the character directly in the string. Well, you already knew this would work. But did you know that you can also use an escape sequence for this? But watch out. I first print the hex value of the smiley Unicode. As you see, the value has 5 hexadecimal digits, but Unicode values in Python come in digit groups of 4. To print this character, I need to type an 8 digit number prefixed with the uppercase U. 
and that printed the smiley. When characters fit in four digits, you use lowercase u like this. And that works as well. I can even use an escape sequence to print a single byte character with backslash x. And that printed the uppercase A. So Unicode characters can be represented by 1 byte, 2 bytes or 3 bytes. You now know that both ASCII and Unicode are character databases that map numbers to symbols. And since I'm done with the history lesson, I can now explain UTF-8. Do you remember when I saved the ASCII file? The resulting document only had 5 bytes, which made it look like an ASCII document. But in fact, when I open the document in Visual Studio Code, it shows that it is UTF-8. And when I save it in Visual Studio Code and open it with the hex viewer, again it shows 5 bytes of data. So, what is it? ASCII or UTF-8? Actually, it is both. As long as you only use simple characters, UTF-8 will encode and decode the text one byte per character. And this is part of the success of UTF-8. It is backwards compatible with ASCII and allowed web browsers to switch to the UTF-8 standard while still being able to open older ASCII documents. But how can ASCII be mixed with Unicode if characters require variable byte length? Well, UTF-8 has a rule for this. Let's look at the character A. You have already seen that character A is stored in one byte with hex value for 1, which is this binary value. Notice the binary value starts with 0 and I'll come back to this. Now I save an emoji and inspect it with the hex viewer. I save the file and open it with the hex viewer. Look at the result. A file containing the hand icon was stored in a 3 byte file with these binary values. Notice the first value starts with 1110 and the following bytes start with 10. This pattern indicates that the sequence is 3 bytes long. But what is the character value? Well, if these characters tell how the data is partitioned, then this is the actual data. And if you count the bits, you will see that this is a 16 bits value. I glue the bits together and use Python to convert them to a hex value. And what do you know? That is the Unicode value. So when the first bit is 0, the character is stored in a single byte. And when the bit sequence starts with 1110, the character is stored in 3 bytes. There are also characters stored in 2 bytes and even in 4 bytes. And if you wondered, that is where the 8 in UTF-8 comes from. UTF-8 stands for Unicode Transformation Format in variable groups of 8 bits. You can look up the encoding rules in this table. I'll put a link to it in the description. Lucky for us, since Python 3 encodes strings in UTF-8 by default, in 99% of the time we do not need to deal with all this stuff. I only dove into it because recently I needed to parse a bitmap file. And if you're interested in how that works, click on this video right now. There you learn how to batch image data into RGB values 